Welcome to Your Biz, Your Rules, the podcast for business-minded go-getters hosted by me, your favorite brain and biz coach, Dara Paddy. This is the spot for those of you ready to blend heart and head, woo and do, income and impact, change and chill, and so much more. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's get started. Welcome to episode 218 of Your Biz, Your Rules. In this show, we are going to be exploring a few of my very favourite ways to create more downtime in your schedule. And as a recovering workaholic and business obsessive, I can promise you they work, but only if you actually implement them and give them a go. So let's dive straight in with tip number one. So the first thing I would recommend you really try to bring into your life, your way of thinking, your way of working, is being more mindful of why you want downtime. Because it's not usually enough of a motivator to sort of just dramatically proclaim, I want more work-life balance. No, if you can be specific about why you want that downtime, it will be so much easier for you to stick with. So what I would recommend that you do is look at all of the different areas of your life. So maybe look at your health, look at your personal development, look at your relationships, look at your home environment, look at your hobbies, look like look at all of the different parts of you, your life, your being, and ask yourself like what would having more downtime make possible in this area of my life and when you can put a name to that thing when you can write it down succinctly and you have this clear image of what it is that you want instead of working 24 7 there there lies your motivation something that's really helped me with this is the energy driver spreadsheet by sarah steckler so i think i mentioned this um, in a previous episode, I think I shared all about this in my Q and A episode, which was episode two eleven, when somebody asked me about habit trackers. And the reason I want to just bring this up again is because it's really about habits that refuel your energy, habits that are more related to downtime than work time. And it was a really handy little tool for just keeping me on track with these things that I said that I wanted. So if you're somebody who struggles to make a priority out of these things that would be great to have, and you tend to prioritize your business instead, then maybe using something like this habit tracker would be the right move for you. It's like, it's really inexpensive. I think it's like nine US dollars or something like that. Um, and it has been well worth it for me. It's something that I still use most days to just make sure that I'm prioritizing those downtime activities that make me feel my best. So the other thing that I would recommend is to share your intentions. So you're really clear on why you want this downtime, right? Share that with people. So let them know that you want to create this amount of downtime each week or this amount of downtime each month and tell them why. And be intentional about who you share this with too. So we want to think about the people that will actually help you enforce these desires so that might be your coach so if you have a business coach or a life coach maybe sharing your intentions with them will be helpful because then when you get together or when you catch up on Voxer they can you know make sure that you're still living in alignment with those intentions maybe you share it with your VA so that they sort of have it in the back of their mind that this is something that you're trying to create so that when you're coming up with all of these crazy new ideas they can say hang on is this going to help you with this intention? Maybe you share your intentions with your loved ones, your friends, your partner, the people who are in your like 3D offline real life, because they're the ones that are probably most equipped and most available to check you when you are like, you know, up at midnight in bed on your laptop trying to get some work stuff done. So think about the people who will actually be able to help you enforce these new rules, these new guidelines you're creating for yourself and inform them of what's going on. 
And it might also be helpful to give them a script, not like I was going to say give them a script to follow, not like an actual script to read, but give them some pointers for how you want to be challenged. Because I don't know about you, but even if it's something that I said that I want, if somebody comes to me and tells me not to do something or that I shouldn't be do something, doing something, I will like react and I will like butt up against that and I will probably try and rebel. Whereas if you like coach them to say that you just want to be reminded that your intention was X or however would work for you, that can be really, really helpful. So also setting some boundaries for how they like reinforce that accountability can be really helpful. The other thing that I would recommend that really does make the biggest difference probably when it comes to creating downtime is to set work hours for yourself. And whenever I give people this tip, this is the one that I see a lot of resistance for, especially for, you know, creative types, intuitive types, people who love their business, people who get inspired at random moments. And this is not to say that you need to be working a nine to five schedule. This is not about setting like a restrictive working pattern for yourself, because at the end of the day, you don't have a boss to answer to. You can work when you choose to work. But what I've found helpful for me is to set a cap of working hours. So it's not that I have a set schedule. I don't start at a specific time and end at a specific time, but I do have a maximum amount of hours that I will work in a day. And that is based on what I know about myself. So I know that when it gets to a certain point, I don't do good work. I know that when it gets to a certain point, I will start getting frustrated at myself. I'll start feeling drained. Like I will not be putting my best into whatever it is I'm creating, no matter how inspired I am. And for that reason, like that number is my working hours cap. And this is going to be very different for all of us. Like I know some people who can work for six or seven hours with maybe minimal breaks in there and have great output and still feel energized at the end of the day. And I know some people who can work for a maximum of like 90 minutes and then they need a break. So this is more about knowing yourself, knowing your patterns, knowing your own capabilities and building a schedule accordingly while also factoring in this desire for more downtime. And what I need to like really make clear here is that implementing these tips only works if you actually commit to them. So there is no point you deciding on your hours cap if you're then not actually going to follow through. If you're going to hit that limit and then be like, oh, I'll just do like 20 more minutes or oh, I'll just do this one last thing. No, you do need an an element of self-discipline here, especially when you're really starting to establish a new habit or a new pattern so the way that I um sort of encourage myself to stay on track with this is to use a time tracker when I'm working so I use Clockify to track everything that I do in my business I have the Clockify timer running right now and it's not because I'm trying to work against a clock it's not because I want to make sure I'm being productive every minute of a day of the day it's simply so that I know I'm not exceeding my hours cap it can also be really helpful just to um figure out how you're spending your time and be able to notice any patterns in terms of the actual work tasks you do but that's not something that I review regularly it's something that I might look at maybe every three to six months I can do another episode on um what an analysis of that type would look like if that's of interest if it is just like DM me on Instagram or something and I will record that for you um but really like sticking with your like cap of work hours can be so so helpful because then the rest of the time is your downtime the rest of your time is like sacred non-working time and don't get me wrong like this is this can be really really challenging when the norm for you is work mode work mode work mode So this sort of brings me into that, like the next step, which is to schedule in downtime things. So especially at the beginning, don't be just like, okay, I'm only going to work for four hours of the day and then the rest of it is going to be downtime. And then it's just this like empty expanse of nothingness that can feel really stressful and it can cause a lot of anxiety because then all you're doing is trying to fill your time while also thinking, 
I should be doing this and I could be doing that and why am I doing this to myself and blah 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 blah. So when you plan your week, if you plan your week, spend a few moments deciding what you're going to do within that downtime and blocking out chunks of downtime in your calendar. So this can be as simple as like blocking out lunch breaks every day. So maybe blocking out lunch breaks, if you take other breaks throughout the day, assigning those at the beginning of the week can be really helpful. And I choose to do this every week rather than just having recurring appointments in my calendar for a couple of reasons. Number one, my like call schedule changes week on week. So I can't just pick one time and have it be like a consistent lunchtime because I'll have overlaps, I just will. So if I do it once a week, then I can look at my calendar for the week ahead and block in my lunch breaks and other breaks. The other thing, and this is just a me thing, but when I have recurring appointments that are just there, I find it very easy to just ignore them. I will mute the notification and just carry on with whatever I'm doing. But if I'm kind of regularly pausing and like creating these tasks, then I'm just more likely to stick with them. Like I said, that's a me thing, but maybe that's true for you as well. And it's not just the basics like lunch breaks and you know, like tea breaks that I would recommend you setting aside for yourself every week. But I would look at the other things that you're wanting to achieve from this downtime. So that first tip of being mindful of why you want the downtime can really help you here. So as an example, if you decide that um, one of the reasons you really want more downtime is because your health is suffering, you're not feeling energized, you're not moving enough, you're feeling sluggish, then maybe you do things like you decide when you're going to go to the gym. So maybe you block out two or three gym sessions a week when you're doing your weekly planning. Maybe you um, look at the class schedule at your local gym and decide that you want to go to, um, I don't know, a yoga class on Monday and I don't know, what else do they do? Aqua aerobics on Thursday. So look at these things and plot in these little bits and pieces that will really encourage you to take that downtime because when you're doing something like a class like an activity that is outside of the house you're kind of taking the choice away from yourself so you're not um, even able to just sack it off and go back to work there are other things that I like to block into my week as well such as breathwork sessions so I try and do at least one breathwork session every week Um, anything like energy healing I will make sure that I have booked in because every now and again I will um, I'll buy like a block of healing sessions or a block of coaching sessions or anything like that so I'll make sure they're all in my calendar I try and be intentional about spending time with friends like my real life friends at least twice a month so I'll make sure those are blocked in I also um, have a couple of really close friends in the US that I try and make sure I speak to on Zoom at least once a month. So I'll make sure those are booked in. I committed to like a year long art class thing this year as well. So I make sure that I have time set aside for implementing those lessons and watching the videos. And then like one other thing that I do to really like make sure that I'm taking the downtime is I'll challenge myself to read a specific book each week. So every week I will pick one book that I want to read. And doing that really just helps me stay on track with taking that downtime. And it might sound like you're being like really restrictive and over scheduling yourself here. And that's not what this is about. It's more about just making sure that you have some things in your calendar that really push you and force you to take that downtime which you've already decided that you want and need because you are listening to this podcast. The next tip that I want to give you, and this is something that you will hear me talk about many a time, but batch your content. And the reason it's really relevant here is it allows you to keep your business presence alive. It allows you to keep your business running and selling without you always having to be physically present, to be in the room to be online 
It's also one of the most effective ways to clear off your mental to-do list so that when you do have more downtime, you're not constantly like trying to remind yourself you need to post a post or send an email or you know what I mean. And like you already know this, but I do have a program that will guide you through doing this in a really like simple, effective seamless way batch like a bitch so batch like a bitch is my 30-day boot camp that really helps you develop and hone a content creation and distribution system that works for you it is not about me giving you like a plug and play strategy that um is mandated it's about us co-creating something that just fits into your business that works for your personality that works for the way you like to create that works for meeting your business goals if this is something you're interested in then I highly recommend you go check out the information page which I've linked to in the show notes um, because it really is one of the most helpful things that I've ever created based on the feedback I've received my final tip for you here to really help you create more downtime is to install an app blocker and switch off your computer at the end of the day. I'm sort of like bunching those two tips together. So when you reach that hours cap for the day, switch off your computer. Um, I remember back in the day when I was really in the midst of workaholic mode, if I walked past my computer, I would quickly just like take it off standby and check in on things. I would check Slack, I would check my emails, I would make sure I hadn't missed anything. I might spend like 10, 20, 30 minutes just doing some like one quick thing. But doing one quick thing every time you walk past your computer soon adds up. And especially because my computer has always lived in between the living room and the kitchen, it was a massive drain on my energy doing that, making that a habit. And the simple act of switching off my computer, it creates an extra step because it means that you have to wait and switch it on and log in. And by the time you've done that, it's not just one quick thing. So just switching off your computer can make a huge difference. And I also recommend blocking your energy, energy draining apps for set periods each day. So that's not to say that you can't, like, scroll on TikTok if that's what you enjoy doing but just having chunks of the day where you are free from those apps that do deplete you a little bit and do keep you connected to work mode can be really really helpful I just use a free app called stay focused um, but there are many available out there for all kinds of different devices I also use the newsfeed eradicator on my desktop so that whenever I'm on Facebook I'm working effectively it's only for like checking in on my groups and supporting my clients on there it's not for mindless scrolling um and that sort of helps me stay more productive and stay focused while I'm in work mode so hopefully you've seen that there are lots of different ways that you can really intentionally create this downtime for yourself Your action step for today is just to take one of these tips and implement it. I would love to hear how that goes for you. So please do feel free to reach out to me on Instagram and let me know. Next week, I'm going to be regaling you with all of my best tips to help you have actual fun with your marketing. So I'll see you back here for that. Thank you for listening to Your Biz, Your Rules. I know that we all like to listen to podcasts, watch videos, read articles or books or posts on Facebook and not really do anything with that information. So I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you to take something from this episode, anything, and use it to spark action. Use it to activate some kind of change in the way you work and the way you live. Do yourself this service today and tell me all about it on Instagram. Hop over, shoot me a DM or share an Instagram story showcasing what action you are taking thanks to this episode. And of course, do all of the usual things. Subscribe, leave a review, let me know how much you love the show and I'll be back with you next week.